Today I'm going to teach you how you can get better fall colors out of your images in Adobe Photoshop. Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64Academy.com and F64Elite.com, where I teach you how to master Photoshop so you can make better photographs. This is Photoshop for photographers, and today we are in Photoshop working on some fall foliage images that we've actually built a good solid baseline from in Adobe Camera Raw, or if you use Lightroom, I show you how you can, they, they basically are the same engine. If you're interested in that, click in the description below. That'll be the video that will teach you how to first exploit the colors in Adobe Camera Raw so that when we get into Photoshop, we have a better baseline built for us. So the stock images that you see right here, these actually have already been exploited. It's my way of finding out the colors that are there so that I can further simplify them and dial them in and unify them all together and make them beautiful right here in Photoshop. So I'm going to start with this image here and I have a whole workflow that I do called tone, color, and artistic effects. And I'm sure you probably heard of that, but I'm going to leave that aside for now because what I really want to talk about here is just how to separate these colors out. And there's two ways that I do that. The first way is actually with an HSL adjustment layer. And the second way is with a selective color adjustment layer. So I'm going to put the HSL adjustment layer on there first, which is a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now I like to click on my adjustment layers from down here. You might have an adjustments panel somewhere. However you get there, just use an HSL adjustment layer. And the reason why is that this allows me to click on an actual color and really kind of separate it out from all the other colors that are within the image. So what I'm going to do with this selective color adjustment layer is just use the targeted adjustment tool right here and click on this color right here. I want to further separate these greens out and make them more green. So as I move the hue to the left and to the right, that is going to make those greens more green or less green uh, or closer to the other color on the color wheel. So I want to rotate this around a little bit, add a little bit more of that cyanish color into them to give them more of that, that greenish color. And then from here, I can make that saturation just a little bit stronger in those greens and then go into the lightness of those greens. If, if you touch the saturation in those uh, in any color, it's always a good idea to look at the lightness of it because the lightness adds or subtracts value from the color in the image. So if I move this this way, it's going to make that green a little bit darker. If I move it this way, it's going to make that green a little bit brighter. It's just a way of kind of counterbalancing or counteracting the amount of saturation that you're adding to it. With the target adjustment layer still selected, I can click on this color here, which is going to be our yellows. And clearly we know where our yellows are, but we can make them a little bit more saturated or even start rotating them around the color wheel a little bit here. And for this, I want to add a little bit more of that yellow to it. So I'll move it to the right just a little bit, and then I'll drop that saturation down. And again, let's look at the value of those yellows. Do I make them brighter or do I want to make them a little bit darker? I think they actually work out a little bit better here, a little bit darker. Then we're going to go and use our target adjustment tool and click on this color here, which is going to be our oranges, but it just so happens to live in the red slider here. Now, this is where I would say that finding a color like the reds or the oranges in this image is a really good idea to exploit a little bit further and make that a little bit more potent than some of the other colors because it doesn't stand out quite as much on its own. So we're going to move it to the left a little bit here and make that give it a little bit more of that red color there to create some separation between the yellows, the greens, and so on and so forth. Now with the lightness here, or the value, again, it's a good idea to add a little bit of darkness to that so that it gets some pretty good value there. So here is our overall before, here's our after. Now, when I look at the before and the after here, I can see that my yellows have gotten much greener than I might have wanted them to, but I do like some of the green value that is there. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on the mask here, press B for my brush tool, right click and just make this one of my soft round brushes here, just a basic spot, soft round brush and make it rather large. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting on this image where I want that greenish yellow to kind of go away. So I'm going to make sure that on this mask, I'm going to be painting with black and just start painting away in these areas. Now, this is a reflection. So anywhere that we see uh, the, uh, the effect happening here on these leaves, we also have to paint that in on the reflection as well. I, like I said, I want some of that green to be in there, especially because that green is going to be controlled right here with some of these trees that are just starting to turn. So I'm going to start painting this in, in areas where I don't want that green to be, or maybe areas where I don't want it to be quite as prominent. Like this is kind of blowing a little bit on that green side on us and then I'll brush over here to kind of mix in some of that orangish uh, yellow into there so we're toning it down now you could use this color mixer in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom uh, which could also give you some of the same effect but the problem with that is that in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom you don't have the ability to mask like this nor do you have the ability to drop the opacity a slight bit to get some of that underlying color to kind of shine through 
So there we've got a really good, I think, good separation of color. Now we're starting to see individual greens and individual reds and individual yellows and individual uh, oranges there that kind of were all mixing together before. Now, another way you can do that is to go into the selective color adjustment. And in the selective color adjustment, it's a little bit different than the HSL in that it doesn't have a targeted adjustment tool. But if you use this right here, this is going to control what color you're in. And this is a pretty easy way to think of this. Okay. Now, cyan, the opposite of cyan is going to be red. The opposite of magenta is going to be green. The opposite of yellow is going to be blue. So what we have to ask ourselves as we move these sliders, which this is like mixing colors, like a painter, we have to, we have to ask ourselves, what is red going to benefit most from if red is going to benefit from more cyan, we move this up. It does not, but if it's going to benefit from getting more red, we'll remove some of that cyan from the color red. If red is going to benefit more from a little bit more magenta, we'll bring this up. If it's going to benefit from more green, which it doesn't because now our leaves become yellow, we're going to bring this up to the magenta a slight bit up here. Does the color red benefit from more yellow? If it does, we'll bring that up. If it doesn't, we'll bring it down and make it, we'll take some yellow out and we'll, we'll in turn make it more blue. So we'll bring this up and make that a little bit more yellow there. Now, this is really important to go into the value of the color red here to see if you want this red to be a little bit more darker or a little bit brighter. Now, as we have started to separate the red out from the rest of the image, what has also happened here in a kind of a negative way is that it's gotten a lot more saturated in the process. So I think by taking some black away from that is actually a good idea because it pushes them away a little bit. If we bring the black up in the color red, it makes that fall foliage a little too contrived. So we'll bring it down a little bit here, just a little bit. Okay. Now we go into the color yellow. Will the color yellow benefit from more cyan? No, it becomes green leaves. Will it benefit from a little bit more red? Maybe, but then it gets too close to the color red. So let's just zero that one out because now our yellows are becoming orange as we move around the color wheel. Does yellow benefit from more magenta here? Not necessarily because what is it becoming? It's becoming more orange and it's not creating color separation for us. But would it benefit from a little bit more green? Mm, not necessarily. But would yellow benefit from more yellow or from more blue in there? It depends on what you want to do here. If you want to push the yellows back so those reds come forward, add a little bit of blue there. That will tone down those yellows. If you want the yellows to come forward over every other color, move that up. And watch, they get more saturated because they're not necessarily getting more saturated. They're getting more of the amount of yellow in there by pulling the amount of blue away from the yellow. I'm going to exaggerate it here just so you can see the look. And do we need some more black in there or do we need some more white in there? Move it up to get more black, move it down to get more white. I think actually right about a little bit less black works there. Now I'm just going to go into the color green here. I'm not going to go through all of them. Does the color green benefit from more cyan? Yes, it does. Because what's happening when we add more cyan to the color green? Well, what happens when we add more sand to the color green is we are removing the red that's in there, which is kind of creating that yellowish color, giving us some green separation among all the other foliage in the image. If we move the magenta up, we're losing our green value. But watch what happens here. We can start making that evergreen tree just pop right out very beautifully here as we move that down to get more green in it. Will the color green benefit from more blue in it or more yellow in it? If it benefits from more yellow, bring the yellow up. If it benefits from more blue, bring it down. This is really up to you and what colors you want to exaggerate and make stronger. I'm actually going to add more black to this. So it pushes the greens away a little bit and allows the other colors to pop forward. Now here's our before and our after. Now we thought we had phenomenal color in Adobe Camera Raw, didn't we? But look at this gorgeous fall foliage color that we have now. Now this is at a high potency here, but what do you have available to you? You have masks, you have blend modes, you have opacity. So now looking at this, if it's too strong, I can just drop this opacity a little bit here and it just helps unify all those colors in the image. But our fall foliage here is much better. Where this becomes really imperative is right here in an image like this. So I'm gonna skip the HSL adjustment, go straight to the selective color adjustment because this is what's gonna open your eyes. Let's go to selective color. We're in the color green now because it's gonna to default to whatever color you used last. So what I'm gonna do here, Will the color green benefit from more cyan? Bring it up, it looks like it does. Will it benefit from more green? Bring it down, it looks like it does because magenta, the opposite is green. Look at the yellows. Okay, so what this is telling me here is that, that the color green in our image is actually really strongly being controlled by something else. Oftentimes what you'll find when you go into the color green and you're saying, Blake, this color in front of me is green. Why is it not changing? Oftentimes that happens because the color green 
is actually being controlled by yellow. So now, will the color yellow benefit from more cyan? Yes, it will, but only for our green grass and our green trees. But that's okay because we have masking. Will the color green benefit from less magenta, making it more green, or more magenta? I would say less magenta. Notice how our greens are starting to come forward. Now, don't worry if it starts to look a little bit like electric green right now. We'll, we'll work on that. Will it benefit from more yellow or more blue? More yellow. And how do we want it? Do we want to add some more black to that or do we want to add some more yellow? I'd say we add a little bit more black to give it a little bit more of that darker value. Here's the before and the after. Might be a little too strong, so hit your opacity and blend it in. So you're basically taking the strength of the colors that we maximized and blending it in with the rest of the image. Now look at this, the, the mask here. Press B for our brush tool, brush on the mask, where we see anything that is going to be yellow, like these leaves here, to bring them back and make them a little bit stronger and a little bit more on that autumn color that we want to see back there. Maybe even back here a little bit too, along this ridge line here. I wish I had mountains in Missouri. Okay, now look at how selective color was used here. This can't be done like this in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom very easily. You can try to do it with you know, brushing and, and some of your selective colors that happen in your local adjustments, but it's not very easy to do it in Adobe Camera Raw. But where did we benefit from Adobe Camera Raw? The foundation of the color that we brought in. So if you want to see how I built the foundation of the color in the image here and you did not watch that Adobe Camera Raw video, click this video here and you'll get to see how we exploited the colors in the image to give us what we have here so that we could simplify them and unify them together. I hope you enjoy this season of taking your fall photos. And if you don't have any this season to edit, look at your portfolio and edit some from the past. Click this video here to see how I built this color foundation in Adobe Camera Raw.